I have another question that um, is related to, I guess, SEO, but here goes. It's a silly question, I think. Of course, you're going to say no silly questions. I get it. But how does a business owner know if their website ranks? How do, how do we know that? I mean, it's mis, it's a mysterious world out there to us. There's a <laughs> novel to you, you and, and your partner, uh, Brian, but for us, it's just, huh? It, it is, it is. So Rita, that's actually a very, very good question. And the truth is, is it can be very difficult to know if your website ranks. So your, your computer, your phone, Google remembers all of your search history, websites you visited, where you're located, Maybe you've interacted with a company, you know, on social media, things like that. So we have to use tools that actually strip all of that out to determine if your website is ranking. Um, and one of our newest, coolest tools is actually um, for Google Maps, because that used to be very difficult. It literally will, will produce different results in, in a different part of a town. And the various different keywords will pr produce very different results. So that... Um, that new tool has been very helpful for our clients. But I always say the real way to know if your website is ranking is, are you getting leads from your website or from other online properties? Okay. Okay. So, all right. I get it that you've got the great tools and I know you would. And I get that um, we, um, you know how we're ranking. And I also get that we know because we're getting leads. So now <laughs> I, another question is, all right, we're getting leads, but where are they coming from? I mean, we're, 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 they're raining down. Hopefully they're raining down on us. <laughs> but, you know, we've all been taught somewhere if we've been in business long enough, know where thy leads come from. It's like, OK, out there somewhere. Help us with that. Close our blind spot here, Chris. All right. So traditionally, um, online leads will come through like a, a contact form on your website, or you, mm -hmm. might, you might get a phone call and you ask them how they found your name and they'll say they found you online. Um, Google Business Profile actually does have a dashboard now that has pretty good information. So a lot of times if they find you through that map, they won't even go to your website. They'll just call you. So you can, a, a business owner can actually, if they've claimed their business profile, go in, see how many calls and how many um, clicks have gone to your website. But the most difficult question is honestly, how many leads are you losing to your competition? Okay. You realize I don't want to hear that question because no one does. <laughs> I don't want to hear that question because no. I'm still focusing on what's coming in, all the mana that's coming from you know online heaven, so to speak. And now I'm not thinking about. See, it's the I don't know, I don't know, Chris. That okay, yes, I know I have competition. Yes, there's alternative um, organizations out there, solutions as I call them. But I'm not thinking, ooh, I'm not counting what's not happening. So tell us more about that. Um, how, what, so tell us more about this um, losing to the competition. So, you know, a lot of people ask, do, do, you, do you have to have SEO? You know, is right. that, is that something everyone has to have? And my, believe it or not, my, my answer is no. You may be surprised to hear that. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, there's, I'm glad you made those two connections because um, you're thinking about your competition, but that SEO in some cases, well, everybody just thinks, oh, well, we have SEO and that'll take care of it because we'll be really at the top of everything. And now you're saying uh, not everybody needs SEO. So tell us more about that. All these new pieces that you're dropping in on us, Chris, <laughs> tell us more about that. It gets more complicated, right? So <laughs> the, the truth is, is if you're selling donuts or cupcakes, or you have, you know, you're a photographer, you take beautiful baby pictures, usually a strong social media presence may be all that you need to keep your customers coming in the door. So I follow some local companies, the Queen's Cups and Rocco's on Instagram. <laughs> and every day I get these beautiful pictures of cupcakes and donuts and baby pictures in my feed. And that's all I need to, to keep them top of mind and to remind me of what they sell. 
Um, now, should they also rank in Google so that you can, you know, find where they're located and be able to find their contact information or maybe get to their menu? Absolutely. But for their particular business, their resources are better spent on social media and having those beautiful pictures day in and day out. Now, if you're a plumber and I have a plumbing emergency, I'm not going to go to social media to look for a plumber. <laughs> I'm going to go onto my phone and say, help, how do I find a plumber near me? So that's where that Google Maps, you know, really comes into play. Um, so there's also times that SEO is just plain too competitive. You might be in a niche that you're up against such big, powerful websites that you, you know, the return on investment may not be there to invest in SEO to be competitive enough. So that's a time when we look at alternative um, digital marketing. It might be social media ads or email or other forms of digital advertising to reach your audience. So we also, we always start by asking a very important question. Do people know that your product or your services exists? Because if they don't, then there might be other marketing channels that will increase awareness that that product or service is actually available. Thank you, Rita, how was your weekend? Oh. Oh, filled with so many things now that there's a holiday season going on. How was yours? Oh, it was great. Same deal here. Lots of holiday prep. But along the way, we were flipping channels. And I happened upon a documentary about the Colorado River. And it, it held me up. I got fascinated. And by the end, I have to say, I was a little shocked. They're shocked about the Colorado River? Uh-oh. Do I really want to hear this? Okay. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah I do. Okay. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot we can learn from it in terms of business, believe it or not. So think about the Colorado River. We think of it as the mighty Colorado that carved the Grand Canyon out of solid rock. It's got class five rapids. It's a daunting river all the way through. Um, it starts at its origin point up in the Rockies. It right. flows through for millions of years. It has flowed through what are now seven U.S. states, and it comes down through Baja, California, to Mexico and out to the Sea of Cortez. But between 1960 and 1980, and this was the part I didn't realize, Rita, it stopped flowing all the way to the sea. Can you believe that? I thought it went to the sea, so it's it doesn't... Wow. Yeah, that is shocking. I had no idea that neither it did. did I. Whoa. Yeah, neither did I. And I couldn't stop thinking about it for the rest of the weekend. And the more I thought about it, it struck me at one point that the Colorado River is a perfect analogy for the cash flow of a business. Okay, so now I get the title cash flow. It's like a river. All right, I'm ready. Let's let's go, Lisa. All right, let's talk about it. So the real Colorado River, as I said, it originates in the Rocky Mountains and it's got a gigantic catch basin up in the mountains. It's over 200,000 square miles, this catch basin. Water, uh, water flows in, the melt water from the Rockies, the rain falls in, the springs, all this water collects in a, what is called Grand Lake. That's the real name, aptly name, I might say. I agree, aptly named Grand Lake. <laughs> yeah. um, and now let's think of that in terms of business. What's the origin of a business's cash flow? Well, it starts with a mountain of sales, yes? Yes, yeah. So just as water collects in the real Grand Lake, when a business generates sales, the cash that's generated from the sales collects in, oh, let's, let's call it lake revenue. <laughs> okay, lake revenue. I love, first of all, I love the analogy of the river collecting into a lake. And then I love the analogy of how our sales collect into an a Oh, oh, just love the lake revenue. Only <laughs> you would do this one. So keep going. I, I right. can hear the analogies now. Yeah, I know. It's a good one. Okay, so in the real, uh, for the real Colorado River, the rain falls and all of the water actually does make it into Grand Lake. But in a business, and this is a critical point, not all of what's generated from sales makes it into our lake revenue, Okay. Um, your sales numbers could be outstanding, but if you are you actually collecting all that cash, that's the key point. So here's a recommendation I'd like to make to our viewers. Um, make sure you're invoicing regularly and often because you can't tell the customers don't know what to pay if you can't send them an invoice. And second of all, once you've sent out those invoices out, 
make sure you're monitoring your accounts receivable really closely, really carefully, because your lake revenue only fills up when your customers actually pay you. I, that is such a great recommendation, Lisa. And I agree with you. My past clients have often said, I am so busy that I wait for the evening to do my invoices. And then in the evening, I'm so tired, I wait for the weekend. And then of course I wanna play on the weekend and so on and so on. And a month later, it's not even like the cash is gonna come in. They haven't even billed yet. And there's usually a you know net uh, wait for five days to pay or 10 days to pay. So that's even more, it's just, you're so spot on about oh let's, yeah, let's get that revenue. You. I can't tell you how often I see this in small businesses. Of course. It, it's yeah, pandemic, right? Ooh. Yes, and, and it's great that you've got a recommendation. Let's get those invoices out there and let's get collecting going too. Get the collections going. Keep that going. That's the key point right there. All right, so let's talk about the river now. We've talked about the catch basin. We've talked about the lake. Let's talk about the actual river. So when Grand Lake is filled to capacity, it spills into the Colorado Riverbed and there is where the actual flow of the river begins. Now, we know that Mother Nature actually controls the real flow in the actual Colorado River, but a business owner controls how much cash flows into their lake revenue. And there's a lot of ways that they can control the flow. So the main thing is sales initiatives. What are they doing to generate and control sales? They can be doing marketing and advertising. Mm -hmm. They can be doing digital marketing. They can be doing uh, social marketing media campaigns. They can be doing networking, generating referrals from uh, existing customers and other networking uh, connections, or they can be doing sales promotions. There's just a lot, a lot of ways. That was a great introduction. Um, you know that I get really excited about talking about marketing and communications. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is that marketing journey and uh, take a big giant step back and try to make it a little bit easier for folks where we look at the big picture. And a lot of times when business folks are in the middle of things and just trying to get the job done, it's, it's sometimes hard to do that. So we, that's where we come in and we really help to analyze things and come up with some aha moments. And it, it really is the most satisfying moment when, when that happens for our clients and it happens a lot. So um, forget that M word for a moment and let's um, instead focus on some W's. So talking about our five-step plan, we're gonna talk about four W's and then we'll have a little surprise at the end. Um, you know, those W's for us are your what, your who, your where, and your why. And we can talk about that fifth one a little later. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm game. Okay, sounds great. So, um, you know, we talk about sometimes this journey and think about if you were gonna take a trip to California, you're gonna plan out that trip to California. Are you just gonna jump in the car tomorrow and go? Or is that gonna take a little bit of pre-work and some planning? So California, all right. So let's um, let's try San Francisco, ever been there? I haven't been, but I'd love to go. So maybe someday we'll go after our planning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to San Francisco on our journey, all right. Got that in my mind. So what okay. happens now? So we think about that as the what, right? That's the destination. That's where we want to go. And that what really, Rita, is your goal. Uh, we don't talk about it as a goal sometimes, talking about more as a journey with a destination, because when you put people on the spot and ask them a goal, oftentimes they kind of shut down and it's too much for them. You look yeah. like you can relate. You're shaking your head. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's uh, when I do uh, business goals and business plans, it's sort of people do it all the time. They just don't realize it. And so now right. it's, sort of, oh, my goodness, you're asking me about a, a goal, you know, either a weekly or a monthly. It's it's still it's still um, a little bit of a deer in the headlights type of things. And I get it. And you get it, too. So when we work with folks at Scafidi Communications as our clients, we really try to listen to them, take a step back and help analyze what's going on. And it gives them a great pause to be able to really see what they want to accomplish. You know, some goals might be um, a sales goal. Interesting, when you talk to a salesperson about goals, they usually know. And they, 
So all these folks know their business. It's just really to kind of put a framework around it. It might be moving to a locate a new location, opening a second location, moving into a new region, um, trying to get more clients that you really like or are more profitable. Um, there's always that, you know, let's see if we can do a little bit of le a little less or have it not be as strenuous operationally and get more out of it on the bottom line. So those are some things that when we talk about the what that folks can really think about um, when we do this exercise. So when I hear things like new locations and areas and geographies, it sounds as though there's also that um, business, uh, what do you want to accomplish with the company? And then let's drill it down to where does marketing fit in all of that? Great. Love it. That's 100% right, Rita. You know, we don't really, we don't work with folks who don't have a goal or aren't open to having us help them formulate a goal. Um, and you'd be surprised out there, you know, no fault of our own, and I'm victim of it as well. Sometimes we get so busy in the day to day, it really is hard to take that step back. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, for you and for me, uh, we can be back burner people. We, our work is back burner. Okay, when I'm ready, now that I have a moment, let's bring this to the front burner. And um, what, what is it, uh, Covey said? Um, it's not urgent, but it's super important. And so right. things end up, and we try to get it into that front burner and make it just as urgent, but uh, we get it. Yeah. Great. So how are we doing, Rita? Should we go on to our next W? I'm, I'm ready. So we've got okay. two blocks. Now let's go with the second W, which is, do I do a drum Ooh. roll? Oh, sorry. I, I did that prematurely. Do your drum roll. Okay. All right. So the second W for us today is who? And these are done in a certain order for a reason. So now that you know where you're trying to go, California, think California, think San Francisco. San Francisco. Um, yeah, think about those goals for your business. And then we're gonna try to look at who are the people that you need to reach, right? So we there's a lot of jargon going on with that. We can talk about them as audiences and target markets and segments and sales leads. And let's talk about sales gen, sales generation. Um, all of those different terms. But for right now, and for this exercise, let's just talk about them as people. 